What a wonderful pitch and a wonderful way to start the day. And this is how day two started. Solitude on the mountain and not a soul in sight. It was lovely. However, that's not how this adventure started. In fact, it started with me meeting up with Jerry and Mark and we were going to be doing something that wasn't camping and something that I hadn't done for, well, quite a few years, but I was really looking forward to it. Oh, I'm hoping everyone can see the size of the bags. <laughs> see? Yeah. Look, so, these, these so lightweights I, here. Have a look at the bag. <laughs> so, so, special needs. <laughs> Yeah, I'm old, old, uh, old age pensioner. Cancer. Cancer. <laughs> <laughs> sure, but I do have two microphones with me, but one's de uh, buried in the depths of the bag. So we're going to do something special. We're in the Arakan Alps, aren't we? Yep. So um, there's a beautiful loch down here. And the reason that I've got a bigger bag, well, we'll come on to that later on. We don't need to know about that. It's, it's not the fact that these guys are being cruel and make, making me carry everything. In fact, you guys have probably got more gear. Well, that'll come into yeah, yeah well, more certainly at one of us anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, we'll report back when we're at our first destination, which should explain the different yep. bits and bulbs in the bag. So shall we head on? Right, Let's go. And Let's go. Oh. oh, here we go. Oh, it's nice to get that off. So. Oh. Ah. Hello. Is this on? It's on, yeah, yeah it's on, right. we're, we're good to go. So right. we're at a wee crag, aren't we, halfway up the mountain? Yeah, well, quarter of the way, fifth of the way up the mountain, but anyway, on a mountainside, it's quite anyway, nice. Yeah, it's quite nice, there's a wee breeze just coming along the side, so no, well, not as many midges and flies as we thought. Yeah. Shh! <laughs> so yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's cracking, but it's just, just uh, short routes, aren't they, kind of? Short sport routes, um, bolted on the uh, nice nippy schist, but it's good just to get back into it, isn't it? Yeah, Super. I think. Well, you got you were saying it's a, last summer. You guys were out and yeah. Well, I mean, same for me. Not really. I've climbed easier stuff already aye, this year. Aye, nothing. Yeah. Nothing any harder. This is this is as hard as it gets. These guys are leading it and just pulling me up, top roping. I am, which is good fun. I'm enjoying the top roping. Aye. I am. I don't aye, mind. Good, good. <laughs> I think you could lead. You could lead the next one, but just don't take your tent up. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been putting my tent on just bag. just to make it. I found it a bit easy, so I've been putting the big back on. Hardcore, you know? hardcore. <laughs> and we're going to do a few routes here, and we'll report back later on. Yeah. Right, shall we get going? Yeah, there? Okay. Excellent. Okay. I might even film them. Well, that's what I'm going to sharp end. The fact that this little crag was on the mountainside afforded it some air and what I mean by that was there was a little bit more of a breeze which was keeping the midges at bay and the climbing was good fun it was bolted sport climbing uh, nothing too technical for um, for those of you that do it more often than I do but it was certainly got <laughs> got me thinking and uh, it was great to get back on the rock oh, a bit of fun wasn't it yeah, it was good it's good to be back on the rock yeah the midges have made an appearance, so it might be time for you for you to go and camp. <laughs> <laughs> They're loving this. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be fine. The midges don't come anywhere near me. I've soaked these in permethrin, so right. yeah. it's got a kill zone. They'll, they'll be the people that like veal, not the veal venison. They, these are arica midges. Arica midges. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they'll, they'll bite through the tent <laughs> fly sheet to get to you. <laughs> well, it's quite good. How many routes did we do? Four. Uh, Four routes or something like that, and uh, first two, harder, the two warm-ups, and then they get harder, and then. Yeah. The last one was really nice, so we overhang on it and... The second last one was really nice. That was nice yeah. too, yeah, it was nice, nice too. It was good, it was good fun, yeah. so... Murray will maybe show you footage of them. Yeah, I'll see, I'll see if I can get some dynamic footage on the, the screen now, but... Right, I'm going to head on, so you'll not see these guys, they'll, they'll be disappearing. Really? Okay. I'm going to get so a heavy pack on and try and get to the top of this. Stay, stay classy, you need to stay classy. Uh, Lock well, and rest them. Well, I can, I can make, I'll make that decision, because be, uh, you'll not be here to make that decision. No, <laughs> well, I might hear the screams, they're just down the road from me, so <laughs> <laughs> I might hear the midges eating you. <laughs> Don't tell them what I've felt it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> right, see you later. Uh, Hi, thanks for billing me. If you're going to snore, keep the dent door shut. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will, uh, there's a breeze on top. Thunder. <laughs> Hi guys, see you later. So I said my goodbyes to Jerry and Mark and as they headed the short distance down the mountain, I was now heading the longer distance up the mountain, trying to keep ahead of the flies and the midges. Well that was great fun, first time I've been climbing in quite some time and very enjoyable and it was good of Mark and Jerry to uh, <laughs> 
drag me up the cliffs down there. But yeah, much fun. The objective now is to get to the top of the mountain. And it's lovely, I'll show you the view that I'm experiencing at the moment, just down to my left here. You can see down the, the view over here is, it's fabulous, it's Glen Crow. And uh, the rest will be thankful just down there. And the mountain I'm going to go and camp on is Ben and Lochan. And <laughs> in fact, yeah, I'll, I'll show you the steep bit in a minute. But yeah, everyone that's come down past me said that it's, it's fly hell up there. So I'm hoping that the wind picks up a wee bit. It's one of the things a lot of people think, oh, it'd be great to go camping when there's no wind. But now that we're into June and summer, the downside of that is the midges. And I'd rather have a bit of wind than the flies and the clegs and the midges and all that sort of stuff. Anyway. Let's show you what I've got to tackle next. So this is the, the steep part. And in the summer it's just pretty, it's, it's not too bad, but you do have to watch this. Might be, in fact, I've actually said this is one of the easier hills to do. And in summer conditions, it certainly is. It's a fairly steep pool, but in the winter or any ice in the ground, this bit here is very, very dangerous because there's a long run out. And I know there's been quite a few fatalities. So just, if you are coming up in the winter, just be wary of that. Make sure you've got your ice axe and crampons, but anyway, the midges are swarming <laughs> when I've stopped. So let's see if we can get up to the top and see if we can, or hope for a breeze up there. I made my way up the steeper section and there was a few bits and bobs where you had to get your hands on the rock, but nothing too bad in these summer conditions. Well, the midge are quite bad. <laughs> no breeze is picking up. But I've sprayed everything in permethrin, including my new, got a new uh, top. I'll maybe talk about that at the top. It's something a bit different for me. I'll tell you why I've got it and why it's been quite good today. So, anyway, final steep pool to come ahead. That's the top up there, isn't it? Magnificent looking mountain. And the path weaves its way up and you can go out into the promontories up there. I'll show you in a minute. Lovely. I've taking my time though. Not enough, not enough time for the midges to catch me, but I'm going at a steady pace. So after the steep section with the run out, it does level off a bit. But as I said, there's, there's a steeper part to come where there's an amazing little promontory that you can step out onto. Not a place to go if you don't like exposure, but it gives you a great view back down the ridge. And this final bit of the path, it takes you up towards the summit. It, you, care is required here as well. It's quite, it's quite a steep little path, and there's bits again where you have to get your hands on the rock and something to be wary of if you're coming up in the winter. Is just, just be careful and have all the correct gear with you. Anyway, after a little bit more climbing, I made it onto the summit of the mountain. Oh, look at that! I don't know if you can see that a wee breeze. <laughs> I'm super happy, and I've come over to the second top. I think that's the true summit over there, but I wanted to just come here just to see if there was any better pictures because I think there's a lovely exposed spot which normally I wouldn't go for because it'd probably be too exposed, but it's going to be perfect hopefully to keep the midget at bay. But what a, what a place, look at the views! Anyway, I also wanted to come and have a view west from here because this summit actually blocks the view west from the other summit and I'll just spin you around, I'll show you. It's rather fine looking out, way down over yonder. Perhaps the Jura will be there somewhere, which is where, which is, was where I went hiking a few weeks ago. I think that's some just there, they're not coming to the camera, but what a place. Right, just beyond the summit there is a lovely wee spot, so spin you around again. Let's head back there, let's get the tent up and I'll have my first tea. <laughs> I've got two teas with me, and I've got two treats as well. One treat, liquid treat, you might know in the... Well, you might know both the liquid treats, but uh, I shall reveal all in a wee while. Let's go and get the tent up and enjoy it now. That's the hard work done. Woohoo! <laughs> wow, so I'm going to set the tent. <laughs> get a set of tents up here. There's a lovely breeze. There's lots of uh, daddy long legs. It's that time of year, but they don't bother me. They stick close to the ground. Well, right, well, hopefully you can agree. This is an absolutely stunning camp spot. And uh, the first treat that I had brought with me <laughs> all the way up is some fizzy Fanta, and I've already had a wee drink of it. And as always, I've got a, a reduced, <laughs> a reduced in price sausage roll. I went to the petrol station 
I was at the airport this morning, I had to drop my sister off, who was, she was over from Australia. It was great catching up with her, so um, hence why I'm on the West Coast. And thanks to Mark and Jerry for altering their plans to allow me to... They, they basically started later, because they knew I was in the airport in the morning. But uh, anyway, that's by the by. I was going to talk a bit about this hooded top. I know it looks silly, and I've certainly... Um, I've seen them a few times, mainly younger <laughs> American hikers. And I thought they'd be really good, but when I've seen them worn by middle-aged men... <laughs> like myself, older generation, I think it looks silly, but it's just so practical, it's very thin. Uh, I do have a t-shirt on underneath it, but the, what I like about it is the hood protects your neck. You know how I usually wear a buff, in fact, I've got a buff on underneath here anyway. But this just gives me more protection from my neck and my ears from the sun uh, when it's when it's warm in the, on the two days a year in Scotland when we get it. So that's why I've got it, and it's, it's actually works really well. It's so lightweight and very practical even if it does make me look silly. So I'm actually going to go around the other side. I can't film another side because literally the tent stops and then the ground drops away. It's, it's a spectacular um, location. I'll hopefully show you, but uh, I'm going to put you away just now and I'll bring you back later on. Let's go and have some Fanta and a, a wee snack. Right, I've just heated up some water. I've just got a wayfarer's meal. Doesn't need hydrated. It just needs, to, needs heated up in the water. So I was leaving that to uh, to cook. It's about half seven eight now, and it's lovely. Uh, I've just been chilling in the tent actually, listening. There's, there was football on. There was a late game on. Um, so I've just been sitting and listening to that. Nothing. Uh, no interest. No teams that I support in there. But it was quite relaxing <laughs> listening to. It. But yeah, what a what a point. What a sport. I mean, literally this mountain just drops away down to the rest and be thankful down there. And you can see the ridge I've come up. I don't know if you can make it out in the camera behind me. You can see the route all the way up. It is a magnificent, it is a magnificent mountain. And when I was over in Jura, uh, coming back from the other direction, it's even more impressive, Ben and Loken. I've said it before, it was one of the original Monroes, but it, uh, when it was, recla it was reclassified because it fell short by about 14 metres. Um, of reaching that magical 3,000 foot mark. But what a place in the Aracher Alps. Look at this. You can see why they're called the Alps. It is just beautiful. So I'm really looking forward to having a bite to eat. My second treat is some whiskey. Uh, I think it's tomatin I've got and some peanuts. But I'll have my um, yeah, I'll have my tea and uh, yeah, I'll report back uh, later on. Oh, what an evening. I have just been uh, chilling in my tent again, <laughs> listening to some podcasts. And I suppose a wee tip for you, this is the tip of the day. On the um, many occasions in Scotland when you have really warm, still <laughs> summer nights, and it's balmy warm, happens at least once every two years. Um, again, I might be teaching you how to soak eggs, but when you're in the tent like I was there, I was just chilling. Um, I've kept both outside doors opened and it allows a wee bit of airflow through the tent so you don't bake. Sometimes when the doors are shut and there's no breeze coming through, it can be quite warm. So anyway, that's the tip of the day for you. But this is just wonderful. I can see over to the Crookin Hills, over to the Glencoe ones, I can see Bidgin and up to the, the, the biggest of them all, Ben Nevis. It's so distinguishable. Anyway, we're about, I don't know, 40 minutes from sunset. The last of the sun. It's illuminating the rest of the uh, Arakan Alps. You've got, I can see Ben Vane, Ben Narnane, Ben Eam, the Cobbler, Ben Louvain, through to Ben Lomond. And it really is just absolutely fabulous. And then down to the left of the tent, that's the, that's the, uh, the glen that takes you up to Abyssinia. If you remember the, the haunted Bothy experience that I did the video a few weeks ago, well, a few months ago now, it was certainly different conditions that day. It's absolutely wonderful. I was going to talk a wee bit about YouTube. Uh, I did a video a few, well, it would have been, I think it would have been, it's not out yet. <laughs> um, I, I did a, a video about whether I thought YouTube was worth it. And, um, 
Yeah, I think I think it is, but I, I've struggled a wee bit, a wee bit recently. Trying to get the videos out, videos out. I've not lost any enthusiasm or any mojo for it. It's just I've been so busy. Um, I've had relatives over from Australia. As, as I said, I dropped my sister off at the airport. So I, I had a fantastic weekend with her last weekend, but I didn't get out. And then I've been... It's just, just busy. It's just life. Life's busy. Life's been busy. Um, and I've struggled to get out every weekend. And I've been struggling to find time to edit the videos. So I've been... I have been managing, so I just I just thought I'd, I don't know throw it out there. There might be a few weeks where there might be a lapse in videos. Knowing me, I'll probably I'll probably get round it. Myself and Jerry have got a a trip uh, booked to the north. Well, it's not a trip booked. We've got a few days, and we've got plans, uh, weather depending. We've got plans A, B, and C for uh, up in the Northwest Islands. We're hoping to go for a few days up there, and that'll that'll certainly. And build up the YouTube videos because what I tend to do with the YouTube videos is I, I never have it takes me a while to edit them but when I say it takes me a while I never manage to edit them say I'm out today it's Saturday night I'll not get this edited in time for Wednesday so it tends to be a few weeks um, before they come out and I always tend to have a backlog of them so um, some some spare but that's <laughs> that's not the case at the moment I'm down to about two I think so um, yeah going to Sky I might I might be able to get a few more and get that buffer, that buffer zone back up. It's, it can be tough sometimes. As I said in that video that I was talking about, I have a lot of respect for folk, for folk that do this full time and they are dependent on making videos. So um, any of those guys that you watch and you know they do it full time, you just watch their adverts. You know, go and buy them a coffee. Go and do that because it's it's not an easy it's not an easy thing. But uh, anyway. Yeah, enough yapping about that. I am just going to sit here and watch the sun go down. Um, I've had a few whiskies, not many. Uh, I've still got most of the hip flask left. So I'm going to go down and get that and bring it up here. I might put my jacket on. It's getting a wee bit chilly now. I've done not bad. I mean, it's 9.30 at night now. And I've still got just got this wee t-shirt with a hood on, which I talked about earlier on, which I've been very impressed with. So I'm going to shut up now. I'm just going to watch this uh, the sun go down and... That's the sun nearly down, as you can probably see. Uh, it's just still a lovely wee breeze, which is perfect. And I'm hoping that this cloud that's sitting slightly inland, kind of over Ben Louis, and as I said before, over towards the Crookin group and Glencoe and Ben Nevis. In fact, Crookin's a hill to the right of the the sun. Yeah, I'm hoping that cloud catches. So it might might light up. It might not. I'm not sure, but. Uh, yeah, it's just before ten o'clock. It's one of the most. It's one of the, the benefits of living in Scotland. Is in the summer the uh, well, yeah. Well, it's ten o'clock and the sun isn't even down yet. So I think we still, we still have an hour of light. It doesn't really get dark at night either, uh, which is fabulous. Uh, of course, the opposite is true, <laughs> it's true in the winter. But if you like astro photography, then it certainly works for that. So yeah, I'm just going to sit and watch the sun go down, then I'm going to retire to the tent and finish. I've got a wee bit of whiskey left. But yeah, what a wonderful, wonderful night. So I watched the sunset and then the moon rise before hitting the hay and going to sleep for a few hours before sunrise the next morning. didn't have that good a night's sleep. I didn't do my due diligence when I put the tent up and uh, there was a rock, <laughs> quite a big rock, right in my back and I kept slipping down because I'm on a wee bit of a slope but anyway, that's life when you're camping. Uh, let me just show you where, it, where, where I've perched, well you probably saw it yesterday but anyway the sun is streaming in, it's 5.40, I did wake up at 20 past 4 uh, but the skies were clear, so there wasn't any pink skies or anything for sunrise. So I decided to go back to sleep. But the sun has now woken me up. Let me just show you. Uh, I might have to open the door for you. But look at this spot here. What a morning! Absolutely lovely.
Oh, right. Ooh. Take me up. And, uh, yeah, it's quite warm actually. It's nice. <laughs> right, I'll report back with some. I got my sleeping bag. Right, let's get up. Up to the summit, there's a slightly, very slightly there's stronger breeze. The it's a wee westerly breeze coming in, so let's just sit here. This is lovely. Ooh, right, that's we had breakfast and I'm in no rush, <laughs> really I've just been taking my time, the sun's coming up, it is getting warm I put my wee duvet jacket on when I was on the summit because the breeze was coming in but over here where the tent is, in the sun it's just absolutely lovely so I don't know if you can make out from the way I've positioned the camera the view that I've got straight from the door of the tent's probably got to be one of the best views that I've had on any pitch, <laughs> it's just lovely and I left the door open last night um, so whenever I woke up I could just look out uh, when I woke up at 4.30 I looked out and the sun was just about to rise but there wasn't any cloud in the sky so I actually rolled over and went back to sleep but it's a fantastic, fantastic mountain and I'll talk a wee bit about that once I've got the tent down um, so I'm going to start striking camp and uh, getting stuff away and I'll report back once everything's packed up and in my bag, and I'm ready to, to I'm ready to descend. St <laughs> ready to descend the mountain. God, I can't speak. And that's after my coffee. But yeah, let's get things sorted out. Right, that's me, uh, that's me all packed away. What a, what a glorious trip it's been. From doing a wee bit of climbing for the first time in over 12 months, well, probably, probably longer for me, certainly sport climbing. And then doing this wild camp, and the weather's just been lovely. And you can see this, look at this ridge behind me, and it doesn't get, I, said this, I say this over and over, but it never looks as good on the camera as it does to the eye. And this is really, to me, this nobly mountain ridge, which rises steeply to the summit and this, this summit's 900 over 900 meters it's, it is very alpine and to me i think this is oh this might be controversial is this the most alpine of the arica alps it's certainly i think my favorite um mountain in the arica alps and i know it's a favorite of jerry's as well and he's a local so that means it's even more um i don't know trust it more if it comes from a local but yeah, it's, it's not a long day, it's short, steep, it's got a wee bit of scrambling. The, the views to the rest of the Alps in the west is just fantastic. Uh, so, is it is this the sort of mountain range that where the Corbett's outdo the Monroe's? I think it is, because the other Corbett, our famous one's the Cobbler. But I still, I rate this over the Cobbler, to be honest with you. There's more climbs in the Cobbler, but I just think this is just a magnificent, uh, magnificent mountain uh, walk. Perfect for a nice sunny day, but as I said, please be wary in the winter. There's quite a few bits where there's long runoffs, and uh, you've got to remember, even if you've come up here in the summer when there's snow covering the path that's banked out, it's a serious proposition. But anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Um, I'm going to end the video here. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Right, let's saddle this pack and get off the hill. Uh. 